In this video, we're going to teach you the three ways to represent the remainder in a division problem. So you can write the remainder to a division problem as a remainder, and we already know how to do that one. You can also write the remainder as a fraction, and lastly, you can write the remainder as a decimal. So you might want to write these three things down in your notebook so that you know all the three different ways you can write a remainder. So the first way to represent the remainder is as a remainder. And you guys are very familiar with this already because we've done it lots of times. So this would be setting up your problem and just writing your remainder as a remainder. So 8 goes into 75. We would say 9 times. That's the closest we're going to get. 9 times 8 is 72. Subtract that out. We get a 3. Bring down our 6. 8 goes into 36. We would say 5 times is too many. 4 times would give us 32. And we subtract. All right, so that is a 4. It's hard to see. Um, that would be our remainder. It's smaller than the divisor, so our answer would be 94 remainder 4. You guys are already familiar with how, with how to do this, so we're going to spend a little bit more time on the other two ways that you can represent the remainder. The second way you could represent the remainder is as a fraction. So again, we have this same problem, 756 divided by 8. And I believe we said 9 times would be 72, subtract out, and then we said 4 times would give us 32, and we subtract out, and we had that remainder of 4. Okay, so we have 94 with a remainder of 4. We want to write the remainder as a fraction. We have a little tip over here that's going to help us do that. The fraction, the top number in a fraction, is always called the numerator, and the bottom number in the fraction is called the denominator. You can remember this because denominator, you can think down. It's the bottom number. So how we're going to write the fraction is our remainder is going to become the numerator, and our divisor is going to become the denominator. So we have 94 as our answer right now, and then we're going to take the remainder, which is... 4, and that's going to become our numerator. So I'm going to make 4 as my top number, and our denominator is going to be our divisor. So our divisor is that number here that we divide by. It's always that number on the outside of our box. That's going to become our denominator or our bottom number. So that 8 is going to go on the bottom. So to represent this as a fraction, we have 94 and 4 eighths. Again, I took my remainder and made it my numerator. And I took my divisor and I made it my denominator. So we have 94 and 4 eighths. There is one other way we could write this. If we think about the fraction 4 eighths, that's the same as another type of fraction. It's the same as the fraction 94 and one half. And the reason why is because 4 is half of 8. So we could also write this answer as 94 and 1 half. Okay, the next way you can represent the remainder is as a decimal. So again, we have our problem here, 756 divided by 8. It's our same math. We went in 9 times. We subtracted out 72 to get 36. We went in 4 times to get 32, and we were left with that remainder of 4. We knew that to write this as a fraction, we would do 94 and 4 eighths. Now what we want to do is we want to write the remainder as a decimal. So it says right here in the tip that we need to change the fraction to a decimal. And to do that, we would divide the numerator by the denominator. Another way we could do it is to just think about what is 4 eighths as a decimal. If you aren't sure, like I said, you're going to take the numerator 4, put that into your calculator, and you're going to divide it by the denominator, which is 8, equals 0.5. We see that 0.5 right there, 0 0.5. So the way that we would write this as a decimal would be 94 
point five. You could also think about again what is four eighths as a decimal. We know that four eighths is one half and one half is written as point five. So the other way to do it is just in your head. But the answer to this as a decimal would be ninety four point five. So let's try one. We have a problem up top, 635 divided by 4. We want to write it with a remainder. We want to write the remainder with a, as a fraction, and we want to write the remainder as a decimal. So let's start by just solving the problem. 635 divided by 4. All right, 4 goes into 6 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. Bring down our 3. 4 goes into 23 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. And we subtract and get the 3. Bring down our last number. And 4 goes into 35. Let's see. 7, 8 times. 8 times 4 is 32. And we subtract out and we get a 3. So as a remainder, we have 158 remainder 3. What will this look like as a fraction? I want you to think about that right now and see if you can predict in your notebook. So if you remember, you can go back in the video to check, the way that we would write this as a fraction is we would take our whole number, 158. Our remainder is going to become our numerator, so that becomes the top number. And our denominator becomes the number on the outside, or the divisor. So to write this as a fraction, our answer is 158 and 3 fourths. So what now would this be as a decimal? Some of us know what 3 fourths is in our head as a decimal. We can do that in our head. Some of us might need to grab a calculator, which is fine. So if I pop up the calculator, we would take the top number 3 and divide it by the bottom number 4. And it tells us that the decimal form of 3 fourths is 0.75. So the answer as a decimal is going to be 158.75. All right, last question today, and this is just like a question on your homework, so we wanted to go over one so you knew how to do your homework. It says, choose all the ways that the remainder can be written in this problem. So we're going to solve the problem, and then we're going to check off all the correct ways to write the remainder. So we have 4725, or 4,725, divided by 6. So we ask ourselves, how many times does 6 go into 47? That's going to be... 7 times. 7 times 6 is 42. 47 minus 42 is 5. Bring down our next number. How many times does 6 go into 52? It's going to be 8 times. 8 times 6 is 48. And we're going to need to borrow. 12 minus 8 is 4. Bring down our last number. How many times does 6 go into 45? Let's see, it's going to be 7 times again. 7 times 6 is 42. And we're left with a remainder of 3. Okay, so we have 787 remainder 3. Right away, we can see that this would be a correct answer. Now our job is to turn this into a fraction and a decimal to see if any of these other options work. So let's start with doing the fraction. We have 787. Remember, our numerator is going to be our remainder, and our denominator is going to be the number on the outside here. So we have 787 and 3 sixths. We see that as the second option, so we can check that off. We also want to ask ourselves, is there any other way we can reduce 3 sixths, or is there any other fraction that is the same as 3 sixths? 3 sixths is the same as 1 half. So, 787 and 1 half would also be an option. Lastly, we want to change the fraction into a decimal. So, in our heads we're thinking, what is 1 half as a decimal? We've already done this one. 1 half as a decimal is going to be 0.5. So, the last option, or the last way we can write this as a decimal is 787.5 
which is another one of our choices. So we picked four out of these five choices. Go ahead and try your Google form. Remember that when you are doing your problems, you want to split your paper into three parts. You want to show us how to get the remainder with a remainder, how to change that to a fraction, how to change that to a decimal, and then go and choose your choices to make sure you get all of them correct. Good luck, and we'll see you tomorrow.